against a team from Toronto, Canada. We the North are now we the champions. What is going on, Raptors Nation? It is Luca here back with the Raptors Nation podcast, and I'm joined by the OG special guest, but he was my you know co-star for a while when we first started this pod. Sean Davis of Lakers Nation, he is back to comment on what has been a up and down roller coaster of a Raptors season. I wanted to bring Sean on to get his thoughts on basically this year with the Raptors. And uh, I want to ask Sean if he believes in this Raptors team moving forward. So appreciate you coming on, Sean. How you been? And uh, looking forward to talking to you uh, about the Raps. Yeah, man, it's, it's always fun to be back on the on the on the channel. Uh, I'm going to do this every single time I do come back. I'm going to give you your flowers, like being able to like grow the channel up the way you you, you have recently. Um, I don't know when quite when you you got uh, you cracked a thousand, but you did crack a thousand, which is a, a very important milestone here on YouTube, obviously. So shout out to you. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me back on, bro. I appreciate it, man. And uh, as you know, it's been tough uh, with Raptors basketball, the way it's kind of just fallen apart over the last couple of weeks and months. But there is a lot to look forward to. And there is a lot of talent on this team. So we're going to get into it. But before we get into the conversation, guys, do us a solid hit a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more Raptors Nation pods, post games, other content. And also leave us a five star review wherever you get this podcast, Apple, iTunes or Spotify. And uh, that would be greatly appreciated. So, Sean, before we get into the Raptors, let's start with something that's been catching a lot of attention from all the NBA world. And that is the Jonte Porter betting investigation. So very, very crazy stuff right before the Raptors had their matchup uh, on Monday. There was news that broke that Jonte Porter was under investigation by the NBA for prop bets. And this was from games on, on January 26th and on March 20th. Now, this is the craziest thing if you actually read the report Walsh put out. But there was an increased betting interest on the under for Porter on January 26th in the game against the Clippers. And then in that game, Sean, uh, he played just four minutes and all the <laughs> unders cashed in. Then... In a game on March 20th against the Suns, Porter played just three minutes before leaving the game due to illness. So, again, a very sketchy when you kind of put everything together. He did not score, had two rebounds, and the unders on Porter successfully cashed in again. The next day, DraftKings Sportsbooks reported to its users that Porter's prop bets were the number one moneymaker from the night in the NBA. So, Sean, when you look at this, you're going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He is innocent until proven guilty, but... It's tough. And when you kind of go back and start looking at certain clips, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. But you see instances where, man, is Porter trying to not get a rebound, trying to not score a basket, purposely trying to get him out of a game so those unders could cash in? What was right. your initial reaction to the report when it came out? I, I'm laughing because there, okay, like just naturally, there are certain parts of this story that are legitimately just funny. Like the, uh, oh man, coach, mm, just the stomach is in city, right? Let me, right quick, let me go back to the locker room and stay back there the rest of the game so these unders can cash. Um, so admittedly, like some of the stuff is funny, but I think this is admittedly something the NBA had to have known was going to happen eventually with them. Like, making the the sports betting and the I'm um, to the point where like now I think with NBA league pass they're making it to where like you can actually bet live on the screen or whatever so they they really want to make the sports betting like a a focal point with their with their content going forward and part of me understands that right but it's innocent to proving guilty obviously but if he is guilty and they can prove that yes this was him or like people associated to him like had intel on it or whatever the NBA needs to severely crack down because if they don't and they're lenient with Jonte Porter, then this becomes a severe problem with the NBA going forward that I don't think they can correct if they don't, like, crack down. I don't know what crack down means, but it can't be a, a $25,000 fine, a slap on the wrist, essentially. It needs to be, like, severe, like, like the Calvin Ridley situation, make it a football comparison. Luke, I don't yeah. know if you remember when – uh, and his was even, like, as severe, I don't think, if I recall correctly. The situation is yeah. a little bit fuzzy to me, but – his was, I don't even think he betted on himself or like on his team. I think it was <laughs> yeah. another team. And if it was his team, he was hurt, if I recall correctly. So, and the NFL suspended him for a year 
And he did. Yeah. And he talked about it recently. We're like, yeah, it's kind of felt like I've been out for two years now that he uh, going into his, this upcoming season. So like something like that. I, I've hear I've heard people talk about complete ban, which if you want to get a point across, that's that's one way to do it. It's like, no, this is absolutely unacceptable. We're going to ban you because th- this is way more direct and involving himself, like betting on himself, literally. Um, so, yeah, I think it's lightweight funny, right? But if you want to get serious, then, yeah, I think it's innocent to prove it guilty. If they prove him guilty, then the NBA really needs to crack down because you, you don't want this to turn into a major, major issue that if you let it slide the first time, it's going to be, be way longer and way harder to like correct it and get it under under control, in my opinion. Jonte Porter took Fred Van Vliet's bet on yourself slogan way too literally. <laughs> way too <here>. literally. <laughs> but you know what, Sean? I agree with you. And, you know, this is coming from somebody who's obviously diehard Raptors fan, covers his team on the daily. But you yeah. and I, I'm, I'm pulling for Jonte Porter, by the way, because, you know, he did show some good things when playing extended minutes when the Raptors mm-hmm. went through their injuries, which we'll get to. But it's not a good look whatsoever. And, you know, especially coming out of the whole Otani and his interpreter situation in MLB, it was only a matter of time that something like this was going to happen in the NBA world. And unfortunately for Raptors fans and the Raptors organization, it happened to a player on the Raptors. And I think the NBA needs to come down hard on him and if he is, you know, proving guilty. And I could see a lifetime ban because if you – just give him a little slap on the wrist. What's stopping this from happening again and again and again? And, and this, it was only a matter of time until this was going to become so problematic with sports betting being so integrated in the game. Like you said, you know, commercials, promos, the broadcasters even talk about it during the telecast now that mm-hmm. we're going to get to a point where players like John T. Porter, you know, if, if he's proven uh, guilty, you know, took it in the literal sense where, okay, how can I use this to my advantage and now manipulate the situation where I don't know if I'm going to have a a long career with the Raptors. I don't know if I'm going to have a long basketball career at that. So can I maximize my earning potential right now? So I'm pulling for him. I hope he is innocent, but if he is guilty, yeah, I could definitely see the NBA come down hard and it could be the end of John T. Porter's career, which is very unfortunate because he's still so young, so raw, and it would just be a truly, truly, uh, disappointing way for it to end. And I just want to quickly add that Michael Porter Jr. Uh, finally yeah. broke the silence on his younger, uh, his brother, Jonte Porter. And he said, I know Jonte loves the game of basketball. I know what type of dude he is. I highly doubt he'll do anything to jeopardize that. So, I mean, that doesn't I, scream that he's confident that Porter's <laughs> innocent, but I, I guess we'll, we'll see, right, in the coming days or even weeks, however long this takes. Mm-hmm. I think if, if you are uh, on the side of, well, a ban is kind of harsh. I can I kind of understand that. But I think the NBA, the the, the alternative to that is first time offense is automatic one year suspension. Like that, that is how severe they have to treat it to where even if you want to give them like a second chance in air quotes. OK, cool. You're still going to serve this one year suspension. And then if you do it again, then that's where it's automatic lifetime ban. So I'm yeah. I, I think I'm actually probably more of a fan of that route. Then like yeah, immediately lifetime ban. But I think, yeah, one year suspension. Um, and then yeah, like no contact at all, one year suspension. And then uh after that, if you come up into any situation again where you're proven guilty, then yeah, it's a lifetime ban. Cause I think that I think that's how severe you have to treat it, even though like I don't know if you want to go to that extent right away, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because, again, this is the first time something like this has ever happened. So especially how intertwined the NBA is with betting, it's going to be interesting to see how they handle this. So hopefully John T. Porter, you know, he's innocent. And this is just one of those things that we'll look back on and have a good laugh on. But, I mean, it was just another. (laughs) It's it's, it's admittedly funny. (laughs) I know we had had the four minute, like, okay, let's get serious bit. But, like, admittedly, just thinking about the situation is pretty hilarious. Well, it is because, like, especially since it's all under. So, like, the dude is purposely, like, going out. Like, if this is factual and it proves to be right, like, he's going out there to literally manipulate the situation and it's like okay don't grab that rebound or like (laughs) and like there's one shot in particular and i posted this on my tiktok so like there was a play um last week 
And John mm-hmm. T. Porter, uh, it was against the Thunder, I believe. And John T. Porter, like, literally just, like, puts up a shot and, like, banks it in. But then you look at his face immediately, and it's like, <laughs> I don't think he meant for that to go in. So, and, and you, like, you're online. You obviously see, like, you know, some certain plays that were broken down to kind of prove it. So, it, it is a crazy, crazy story. And it was only a matter of time that it was going to hit the NBA world. Yeah. So... We'll see what happens with that. But, I mean, Sean, it's been a season from hell for the Toronto Raptors. It's like one bad thing after the other. The good thing, though, is that the Raptors finally picked a direction, something that you and I were preaching to the choir, dating back to last year, last summer. They were stubborn in their approach. Um, You know, may have been a year too late with it. But, nonetheless, Mm -hmm. they finally choose a direction. They finally commit to the rebuild. And uh, here we are, Raptors, they got their, you know, their core three, R.J. Baird, Emmanuel Quickly, Scotty Barnes. Uh, I know you weren't on the pod to kind of give your initial thoughts when those deals went down, but what were your thoughts when the Raptors finally turned the page, offloaded OG and Siakam, who, by the way, are going to be unrestricted free agents this summer, got the return that they did, and now this is the core three you're working with going forward? I think I think and you know, I, I wish I could kind of like go back to what my thoughts were in the moment. Um, but I, I think I'm a fan of it because they just picked the direction finally. And yeah, the biggest thing that we always talked about going back to like the old pods from a year, maybe a year and a half ago was what is the upside of this group? I remember even like going into last season. Right, the, the year after the, the playoff run where you lose to Philly in the first round. I remember going into that the, the following season saying, okay, this team has some pieces. This team can be fun. But how far is this team really going to go? I remember us both saying, like, second round. And then when we right then when we said second round, we were kind of like, okay, cool. Like, you need to really, really go for it. Or it needs to be, a, especially after they start, how they started last season, too. We were definitely like, okay, yeah, let's, let, let, let's pick a direction here. Um, And I'm just a fan of that, right? To where now you look at their draft pick situation, you have a, uh, you have your own pick of his top six. And right now it really looks like it's going to be a top six pick. Um, And if it doesn't, if it's not a top six pick, then it's going to go to San Antonio. But you have Indiana's pick between four and 30. And I mean, Indiana's, they're going to be outside of the lottery more than likely, more than likely. So you're going to have their pick as well. Um, And, so, yeah, you have, you have two picks this year, more than likely, right? You have Indiana's pick in 2026, 5 through 30. And, like, the, the San Antonio deal, you're going to have to, like, pay the piper eventually. But, like, I, I, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I think there there is a positive direction going forward. They finally chose a damn direction. And they have some pretty, like, all right pieces going forward. Scotty Barnes really started to, like, develop and take the next step. I, I think you could tell that he got hurt, unfortunately. Um, yeah. I like Grady a ton. Um, I, I think he just makes so much sense for what Coach Darko wants to do. Um, and again, you, you're probably gonna have two first round picks this year. You you can really start to. And I don't think it was ever really a a, a rebuild. I think it was always like a retool. Like we're just gonna we are gonna uh, you know just scratch the surface, tear this thing down. But we want to really quickly build this thing back up. And I think a blessing in disguise or like get glass half full type of look at how the season's unfolded is you've really, because of the injuries and because of all the unfortunate circumstances, Grady Dick has really been able to play and play a lot to where next year, ideally you could be talking about he's a starter in the starting five or like he's yeah. most definitely like a very consistent, stable part of the rotation. And uh, yeah, I've really liked his performances recently. So do I trust the rebuild? I, I'm I'm more optimistic than I probably have been about the Raptors uh in, in over the past two years to be at acting this. So yeah, I'm pretty optimistic right now. Yeah, I am too. And I know it's a tough stretch for Raptors fans because you know they lost 12 in a row and they are probably gonna surpass or they have a good chance of surpassing their longest losing streak in franchise history, which is 17. But you gotta just trust the vision in this situation. I'm gonna say that instead of trust the process because I don't want to steal from the whole Philly ordeal from year a uh, few years ago, but you know, you look at this team, like how many guys have been out? Scotty goes down, you know, surgery out for the season in all likelihood. He's not mm-hmm. going to come back. Yaka Pirtle, and then unfortunately, RJ Barrett, you know, the death of his younger brother, Nathan, uh, missed some time uh, away mm-hmm. from the team. 
uh, understandably. Is he still away from the team? Uh, No, they did return to practice, which is very, very good news. It was great to see RJ back uh, on the bench with Quickly and, you know, smiling, getting back into things. So, like, he's missed time. Quickly's missed time. The only players who have been healthy since the All-Star break were Grady Dick, who you mentioned has been getting valuable reps in minutes. Kelly, and then it was a Baji, but then he got hurt. He got hurt. Last game. You so guys, they, they extended Kelly, right? Yeah, they also extended Kelly. Yeah, I didn't understand that at the time, but I rewatched the uh, uh, the Knicks game from last night. Uh, rewatched some of it, and I'm like, I get it now. He did, he, you want to talk about players who just make sense? He makes so much sense for what yeah. Darko wants to do, especially on the offensive end of the floor. And I'm like, he just makes so much freaking sense. And really quickly, going back to the uh, Going to the the Rebo part, talking about like the some of the draft picks. So I ran a, a a a draft lottery simulator live while you were talking, and Raptors move up to the fourth overall pick in the simulator, and Indiana right now is projected at seventeen, which, like I said, it's going to the Raptors. So you get two, you got a top five pick and another top twenty pick. Like that is a great method to really quickly like get this thing back up and running. Where I don't know if you'll be great next year. But you'll really just start seeing like some great progress next season because of the pieces you already have. You add to top 20 players. Well, that was my argument, too. And I'll get your your take on it. There's this whole like split in people who want the pick to convey to the Spurs this year because it is a weaker draft class. And you keep hearing that. Um, but then there's people like myself who want the Raptors to keep their uh, top six pick. And if they move up to to the top four, which they can, that'd be great because I feel like this team is not far away. I'm not talking about competing for a championship or making a deep playoff run, but but not far away from getting back into the mix. Like I really believe mm-hmm. that this team, uh, you know, didn't suffer those injuries. They're on a three game winning streak post All Star break. They make it interesting and probably get the 10 spot in the East. And mm-hmm. I feel like with the development of Scotty, RJ, quickly, they've shown you a lot of good things. They're going to have a full off season. Great is emergence. Yeah, you add those picks. I mean, I'd rather the Raptors add talent now because they stink than wait next season <laughs> because they could be in a much different situation next season. Yeah. I know it's a better draft class, but let's just say the Raptors are back in the playing tournament. Then losing that pick may not hurt them as much because you have the talent that's starting to bloom. So would you agree with that? They, like, I know it's a weak draft class, but would you rather the Raptors keep their pick this year or convey it? have it convey, and then and you just pay off the Spurs, and then you move on, and then 2025 and beyond, you have your pick. So there's a couple of points I want to address, and I'll start with the weaker draft class point. I, the reason why I put air quotes there, because I think when you say weaker, and when people say weaker, admittedly, yes, there are a, there are not a ton of, like, screaming superstar guys. You don't have a, a Wemby, Braden Miller, Scoot Henderson, Amon Thompson, Cam Whitmore. You don't have... Like all these, Asar Thompson, Grady Dick, Anthony Black. Like you don't, you don't have that in this draft class. Like those are all dudes that have like maybe not Grady Dick, but like there, there's a lot of players in this past year's draft class that have legitimately superstar upside. There aren't that many in this year's class, but like weaker class. Like this is still a really fun class in my opinion. I just started like my like draft evaluations a couple of weeks ago, and I'm like, man, this class is fun. There are still a few guys that have like real legitimate superstar upside. But at the very least, like, there's a bunch of dudes that I'm really confident are going to be good rotation players to good starters, at least, right? Which is still a really valuable thing for a lot of teams. And to go, like, to your point with the, like, draft pick and bang this year or next year, like, think about it this way. If you get a top four pick, right? You get a top four pick. The odds of you being this bad next year are extremely low, Yeah. right? So, like, you have to realize how, like, how weird and how unusual this season's been for for anybody to where just the amount of games missed due to injury you have all these in and out moving pieces because of the trades that that's very very rare and like you're not going to get that next season like at worst at worst this team is like you said probably like a nine a a 10 seed maybe an 11 seed is trying to fight in or whatever that's probably at worst right i think you're probably another year away after next year but so we're talking about the 13th pick in the lottery, the 14th pick in the lottery, which I'm not sure is equal to a top five. Even though next year's class is better in terms of like star potential or whatever, is the 13th pick in the draft better than a top four pick in a weaker draft? No, it never is. Like this is still a top exactly. four pick. 
uh, or a top six pick or whatever, right? Now, am I going to be many uh, the, the the 17th pick, which is yours regardless? But am I mad if if the if your uh, if your pick conveys to San Antonio this year? Well, I might actually be honestly because again, I just don't think. You would almost say, hey, let's be bad one more year. You would be banking on being bad again next year to get like the to to get all the riches that you want and being the, the superstar draft class next year. Yeah. And again, like I just said, I don't think you're gonna be that bad to where you're in competition to get all those elite dudes next year. So you're bad yeah. now, get your pick now, and let's build this thing up. And like I said, I think next year there's there's bound to be a, a massive leap of improvement. Scotty's made the the uh, leaps that you already talked about. Um, you get the the top five and top twenty pick in here, and let's run this thing. Give Darko some time, and yeah, I think the Raptors should want their pick this year. I think it's a top five pick. You should want it. And, and thank you for saying that because that's what I've been trying to say. It's like you know a, a lot of people are saying this weaker draft class, weaker draft class. If you get a top six, top four pick that player is likely going to be better, like you said, than the late lottery pick. And this season's been an anomaly. And we never, as Raptors fans, want to go through something like this again. So it's like, you've been bad. You've had to go through it all. At least, and like, then, reward yourself. For like exactly. I think it would all. be absolutely deflating, Sean, if after the season, how it's gone, the Raptors miss out on a pick. Because then, to your point... It's like then you got to bank on being bad again next year, so then you can get a, a top pick to complement your core three. Whereas yeah. if you get a pick now, you can make that work, and that goes back to the whole Yaka Pirtle trade. Because what could suck big time is the Raptors are doing all the right things; they're losing, they're tanking, which is why people got to understand this is why the Raptors are bad. They, they're you know they're, they're they're trying to lose games here, but there's still a forty six percent chance that they don't uh th that they get their pick so there's a better than 50 percent chance that they don't get their pick so mm -hmm. i'm hoping they do get their pick because i agree i think this team will be back in the right direction adding a top six pick than if you know they miss out on a lot uh miss out on it completely because it would be a big slap in the face especially how things have gone down which is all the bad luck that has hit this team yeah i i said i yeah I, if i mean if i'm a raptors fan i'm in your shoes yeah i'd be i'd be pretty pissed off if i did get our pick <laughs> like, just because, like you said, I went through a season of, like, imagine if, and actually this did happen, the Lakers didn't have their pick the Westbrook year. Like, how bad that season was to endure that season. It's yeah. not be not to, like, at the have having a light at the end of the tunnel being, all right, at least we get our pick this year and it's the top 10 or whatever pick. No, <laughs> like, that'd be so mad. Yeah, I want that pick now. I don't care. That pick now and the people – who say, oh, let it convey now. This time next year, I, the Raptors could look a lot different, and then they'll be thanking the lottery gods like, for being on their side. Like last day, imagine this is like heavy best case scenario, but it's, it's within the realm of possibility. Imagine the Raptors are the sixth seed next year. And you're and wow, you're that's, saying that's really shooting high. Yeah, I, I know, but like imagine okay, let, let, let's aim a little bit low. Let, let's say they make it to the playoffs and they're a seven, eight seed. Yeah. And, and and going from the spot you're in now, the pick doesn't convey. And I mean, the pick conveys to next year. So like you, San Antonio gets your pick and you have your pick next year. You missed out on the top five player potentially or, or still top eight player. Right. Because that would have to happen in order for the pick to not uh, be yours this year. So you missed out on the top ten, top eight player. And in return, you get like the 17th pick next year. I, I I want my I want my top six player. Yeah, and, and you know what? No, like I I kind of like looked at you weird when you said top six. It's like that's the beauty of this team. Like you don't know how good they can be, and like they have all untapped potential. Whereas before, and you you mentioned this, you knew the ceiling to that team. With this team, you don't know the ceiling. Like they can literally make that leap next season. Where this team, you know, has a, a kind of like Orlando type of leap and they jump into a top yeah. six spot, or it could take some time. And, like, you look at the bottom, though, of the East, like, Bulls, Hawks, Nets, I think those teams are in limbo. Like I think they're they're the all Raptors blowing it up. From a year ago. So Raptors could easily, you know, jump those teams. And then, yeah, you're talking about battling for an eight seed. That's not bad in the second year of this rebuild. So I think that's the beauty of this thing, and that's why you need the pick now, because you don't know how fast-tracked this rebuild can be and how much this team can – blossom and bloom whereas if you don't get the pick then yeah you're, you're basically banking okay we got to be bad next year because we want that pick so yeah. then two bad seasons in a row that's not and then 
Like yeah. it, it, even if you look below you, so you you brought up Bulls, Hawks, Nets. Even if you look at the teams below you, Detroit maybe, but like they're, they're that the way that roster is built is just super weird. Right? I think they have more work to do. Washington's at least two years away. Yeah, and Charlotte maybe, but I think they need to get. I know they uh, just got Steve Clifford in there like last season, but I think long term they need like a, a different coach, a different like voice in that locker room. So I think they're even a, a year away. So uh, I mean. Uh, you, you got to feel good about at least being like a for sure playing team next year. And all it takes is yeah. one, two games to win. And you're looking at, again, picking 15, 16, 17 next year. Where it's like, well, what the hell? So, yeah, yeah. I, I could, you I want could the see pick. the plane. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You want the pick. So. Okay, Sean, talk to us about uh, Darko Ryakovich because it's kind of feeding into um, – the patience we need to have with this team. And I know Darko has been getting a lot of criticism because this is on pace for being one of the worst Raptor seasons of all time. And unfortunately Darko is that scapegoat, if you will, you know, he's going to be the guy taking a lot of the blame, but you yeah. got to look at this situation and you got to cut, cut him a lot of slack. Like the amount of guys in and out of the lineup, different lineups used, Star player yeah. is uh, missing. It's been a very, very difficult hand that Darko's been dealt with. You know, coming into the season with a roster that was trying to go for it, then in the middle of the season, you tear it down, rebuild, and then towards the end of the season, you're basically, you know, probably behind closed doors being asked, okay, like, let's not win too many games here. We want to try to keep the pick because that's clearly what it's looking like. So when you factor in all of those things, how would you assess Darko Ryakovich's first season as Raptors head coach. And do you think he is the long-term coach here or more of a transitional coach where once this team starts to, you know, get better, he's going to unfortunately be the fall man. I think that um, there are a lot of reasons to be optimistic about Darko. Um, there is a stretch of February right around the, the, the trade deadline, line, the all-star break where this Raptors team shows some really, really like fun signs, especially on the offensive end. I will say this. The biggest difference between Nick Nurse and Darko is I think the roles are kind of flipped. Where I like Darko a lot more offensively than I did Nick Nurse is, is during Nick's time as a Raptors coach, where obviously like Nick Nurse as a defensive mind is freaking outstanding. Um, but February 7th to February 29th, which is I think a 10-game sample size, the Raptors were top 10 in offensive rating, top 10 in pace, top 10 in offensive rebounding percentage, top 10 in turnover percentage, meaning they're on the offensive glass heavy. They're not turning the ball over a ton, which is a, a big part of that offensive rating being so high. They were top 12 in assist percentage, and they were top five in assist to turnover ratio. Like, that's really, really encouraging. And I think you go, like, watch the games or watch the, the film. I obviously don't watch every single game, but I try to, to watch some film when I can. And... I think one of the biggest things that pops up to me when watching like the Raptors play uh, play basketball, <laughs> duh. Um, I think one of the biggest things that pop out, with, especially watch their offense, is they make so much good use of all the space on the floor. Like they are so well spaced out. They use every inch of the floor, whether it's like some of the off ball screening stuff. I posted a, a clip on my Twitter page at Sean underscore DAVI from, from the Knicks game last night. And genuinely like that's one of the more creative looking sets i've seen in a while and i'm like oh crap dark okay get get in your bag then darko um like just really really creative stuff and I, I think like give him some time i think again you go back to that stretch where everything started click i think they were five and they're either five and four or six and four in that stretch depending on if it was nine or, or, or ten game sample size the offense was super super crisp like they were really starting to buy and they were sharing the hell out of the ball. Um, I forgot where yeah. I know he's from like the, the Taylor Jenkins tree. I, I forget where he was before that, but like just the, the way I think you tweeted this out, your, your Twitter page or X page the other day. Like this is one of the, this is the highest, like assist the most assist. total yeah, the season. Most most Raptors. Assist. Yeah. In yeah. Raptors franchise history. Yeah. So like I, I I'm a fan, I'm a fan of Darko. Um, I think he could be a long-term play. I think they need to, I think at, not next year. I think after next year, like it's really going to be okay. We got to get some results in here now, but have some patience. I think they're, I think he's about the right stuff. I think 
he cares a whole hell of a lot about his players. Uh, just going back to the uh, the infamous rant uh, from back was it was in January where we played against your uh, Lakers, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and he has that infamous rant. Um, and like I, I think the players want to buy in. It's just been such a bad situation with all the injuries, the in and out pieces. It's kind of honestly at times been a tough situation for Darko. But um, yeah, I'm a fan. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to see how this rebuild shakes out, retooling, if you will, with uh, with Darko at the, help, at the head. Yeah, he's definitely got at least two seasons, including this one. That's why all the narratives about, oh, fire Darko after the season. That's just complete garbage. Like, if you fire at Darko, he- you're not getting anybody good in here because uh, another coach yeah. is going to look at that situation and be like, do they not see the dumpster fire that was going on with the Raptors roster in terms of trades and injuries? Hell no, I don't want to be a part of that organization. So, like, naturally, you kind of have to give it. You got to give them this year because of the crap situation it was. And then you got to give them next year. You got to give them a real year where yeah. it's not, like, injuries everywhere, in and out trade pieces, a real year where he gets the – and also, like, to be quite frank, the roster he was given at the beginning of the year was not really his pieces. They were, like, the previous regimes, like, guys or whatever. Let him really – help build out the roster that's obviously Messiah's job but like the head coach in my opinion needs to be involved in the process like let him get more of his guys in here and that's another reason why I said uh Luca like Kelly Olynyk makes so much sense now I remember when they they traded and extended them I was like huh that's a, that's a bit weird but then I watched the game from like last night for example I'm like oh okay never mind it makes some sense because his yeah. ability as a floor spacer his ability to make like passes as a big man where if they want to like space the floor go five out let them play from the top and, and make those reads that's why it made a ton of sense in utah um so yeah i, I think yeah you gotta give them this year and next year and then the year after that it's like okay we gotta get some results in here darko yeah i agree with that and you just look at the development of barnes too i mean that should be encouraging that barnes has his leap year under darko and you know being able to handle the ball a lot more. We saw, you know, Point Scotty activated and, and Barnes really thriving with what Darko was trying to do. I, I think, yeah, next season, give him a full year when you know what most of your team's going to look like, what the core piece is. And I think, I think he could cook because yeah, like to your point, offensively, there's been some, you know, some, uh, there's some games, some sets that he runs where it's just like, wow, this is some nice basketball. And it's no coincidence, right? Like the most assists, in a season in Raptors franchise history with his new style of offense implemented. And I believe the players were starting to buy in. And again, going back to that uh, sample size out of the all-star break, they look very, very good. And obviously, you know, defensively, they got to get better, but if their offense looks that crisp, they're going to, they're going to be a problem when, you know, their talent returns to the lineup. Like this is a team that's literally had one starter healthy from um, the all-star break. You're not going to win. I put any coach in that situation. You're not going to win much games. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Sean, we are going to wrap up here uh, by talking about some of your favorite draft targets for the Raptors that make the most sense for this team. So let's say the Raptors keep that pick number six. Who are you going with? So I'm going to really quick, I'm going to go back to that lottery simulator because I think uh, I'm doing a, a mock draft for my for my personal channel next week. And one of the teams that I have like kind of a, a hard time like picking for right now, just off the top of my head, would be the Raptors because it's just so bizarre to me like what to do with this team. Because I look at the roster top to bottom, if they are fully healthy, I'm like, okay, I, I don't. Do you get it? There isn't a big that's good enough to go top six, unless like Alexander Saar is there and you automatically take him. Um, so part of me wants to say you play the board. So I, I'm I'm gonna actually really quickly, I'm just gonna share my screen so I can show you the uh the yeah, lottery do. simulator. And I I ran another one. So th- this one has the Raptors picking at number six, which means they keep their pick. Um, a big I got crap, a big loser i think in this simulator would probably be memphis because i feel like in every simulator i do memphis is like top six so if it's if it goes like this if it's washington portland charlotte san antonio detroit god detroit always gets screwed in the lottery uh <laughs> they detroit, need the Toronto, pick. yeah they help them out so if it's washington one alexander Saar, if it's portland two 
probably like Zachary Richie say. Uh, Charlotte three, probably like Cody Williams. San Antonio four, probably Reed Shepard. Detroit five. Uh, hmm, that's interesting. I would actually have to think about that one. But essentially, where I'm at with this is Toronto. It's I think there's a bunch of different directions they could go, Luca. I think for one, I think they're really the epitome of just take whoever's the best player on your board. Um, yeah. because I could really see this going a bunch of different ways. Again, if you're picking at six, there isn't a big that's an option here, in my opinion. But like if you want to go guard and maybe you don't view Emmanuel quickly as like the long term lead guard, you have Rob Dillingham here, you have Nikola Topic here at six, who actually, if he made it this far, that's the pick I would make, Luca. Um I, I, I did a, a top 10 guards video in this draft last week on my channel. And I every player had a pro comp. Nikola Topic or Topic, I got to figure out how to pronounce his last name. Uh, he's the one player I didn't have a comp for because I genuinely didn't know what to what to go with. But 6'6 guard that just processes the game at a ridiculously high level when the, the best playmaker in the class elite rim finisher where for an 18 year old kid you see a lot of like a lot of young guards like try to avoid contact at the rim uh gonna go with the wrestling reference here nah nah uh he, he goes he embraces the contact he is an elite finisher the jumper's a little shaky but it's not broken so sounds familiar if you if you understand what i'm going with with, with that reference um shout out scotty and the defense is a question, sure. Obviously, I mean, not sure it is a legitimate question, but if he's there at six, that makes way too much sense for you. Um, there's a word with San Antonio takes somewhere like Rob Dillingham is an option at six. Um, yeah, I, I think really Ron Holland is an option at six, G League Ignite Wing, that yeah. freak athlete. Um, so honestly, there's a bunch of different directions, but um, like one of those guys, and then when you go down to 17. If you want, uh, what what is the backup big spot looking like? Hold on one sec. Let's see. Yeah, uh, you have Yaka Pertle and then uh, Kelly. Unless you want to make Kelly more of a of a four, you have Coral Loco still. And then you don't know you what's have... gonna happen with Monte Porter, which is important to know. Like, yeah. Um, but like, if if you want to go big, then I think you'll probably. Excuse me. I think you'll probably be able to have your pick between a guy like Kyle Filipowski, who can really play this system as a as a all right enough. He can stretch the floor. He can make some passes. Um, a guy that really really makes sense actually. Now that I think about it, in terms of like the style of play that Darko wants to have um, and, and how he wants his his bigger wings and his bigs to play, is uh, Colin Murray Boyles out of South Carolina, who gets comped a lot to like a Draymond Green, but I've, I haven't watched his tape yet, so I don't want to go too far. But like just the his awareness as a passer, um, the defensive ability he does provide, that's a guy that makes a ton of sense at 17. If you want to go guard, like let's say you go wing at, at six, you want to go guard at 17. Jared McCain, who I freaking love. I'm a Jared McCain stan. Um, again, another guy that makes a ton of sense for the Raptors, uh, has – I mean, he's what a top five or so shooter in the draft has playmaking upside is a, even though he's a small guard, he competes his butt off defensively and is, is a smart player. So kind of went on a tangent there, but that's what happens when you ask me about draft stuff. But um, I'm excited. I really am excited, especially if the Raptors do keep their top six pick and you get to pick again at 17. I think there is a real possibility that you could really like not re yeah, you could really just retool this roster and you yeah. can head into next season where we're going to really quickly pull up the, uh, like, contract situation uh, from, like, Spot Track. And that's and why I brought go... you on, by the way, because I know you had your eyes all on the draft. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, you go to, like, next season. You have a, a team option on Bruce Brown, which I would imagine the most likely outcome is you decline the team option and just rework a new deal because I'm not paying Bruce Brown $23 million. Uh, well, they're probably going to trade him. Yeah. You think they'll, you think they'll trade him? Yeah, I think yeah. Bruce Brown, he's done. Yeah, he's not. At least I don't want to see him back. I mean, 
very quickly, <laughs> Bruce Brown and Gary Trent Jr. I, th- I think they're they're done. Well, luckily, Gary Trent Jr. will be a unrest- unrestricted, unrestricted yeah. free agent. Yeah, you have quickly as a restricted free agent, but like you're bringing back next year, you're bringing back Scotty, Jakobertel, yeah. RJ, uh, Grady, Ochai. You have restricted bird, uh, restricted bird rights on Emmanuel quickly, like Kelly Olynyk. You you make yeah. your decision on Bruce Brown, where you can actually probably just accept the team option and trade him. That's probably the 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 most That's likely right, outcome, probably. actually. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, you can really like retool this roster, and if the roster's looking like that, then I'm I'm probably going guard, and I'm probably going like upside wing. So yeah, Ron Holland at six makes a ton of sense. Like a Colin, a, uh, a Colin Murray Boyles again also makes some sense too. And don't forget, they also have uh, an early uh, second rounder. So the Raptors could have three picks in this draft. So they could cook with the two uh, first. And then literally they're going to have a 31-32 depending on where the uh, the Pistons and, uh, land because they got that pick in the, the Knicks deal. So it's the Pistons pick. So that's another you know guy that could turn into something. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Sean, thank you so much. Appreciate the draft update. And we're definitely going to have Sean back on, guys, as we get closer and closer to the draft. There's going to be so much speculation about this draft because obviously the Raptors are looking towards it. A lot of mock drafts have come out. So you can take a look at the website, raptorsnation.com. And also we'll have uh, Sean back on, uh, break down some stuff as the Raptors. They are looking ahead to next season. It's been one of those years. But, Sean, thank you so much for coming on taking time out of your day and weighing in on the current state of the Toronto Raptors. Yeah, man. Thanks so much for having me on. And yeah, my, uh, my next appearance will be a lot quicker than the last than the, this time for sure. It starts like distance. And I don't want to jinx this when I say, but I'm going to say it anyway. It don't hate me if it backfires, but you're welcome for the free win that the Lakers are both to get when they play the Raptors <laughs> next week. If Man, the Raptors a lot. somehow win, we'll both be pissed, actually. So. <laughs> I'm going to text Luke and be like, damn it, we, I thought we had a deal. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel for more. Leave us a five-star review. That is it for me. This is Lucas signing off. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you all again in the next one.